God is good, and I know that God is up to something good to you today. Tell your neighbor, God is up to something good to you. All right, how many of you can celebrate? We thank God for our corporate fasting. Come on, we made it. Thank you, Jesus. We made it. Oh, praise the Lord. How many of you found it hard? Well, I, to me, it was, it was not easy, and there were times that I was, I was quite uh, weak, and there was time when I was, I was uh, kind of dizzy, and, uh, but oh, I thank God, oh, he, he, he made us through, all of us, corporate fasting and prayer. Come on, give Jesus a big hand one more time. <laughs> now I want to welcome our longtime friend, Wetung and Suryani. Welcome home. <laughs> I told them just now when I saw them and I, I told them, hey, you don't age. It's just like, wow, keep young. Amen. So uh, today I'm going to share to you, it's like uh, kind of the continuation of what I shared to you last week. And uh, how about if we bow our heads and pray right now. Heavenly Father, we welcome you. We know that you are going to speak to us again. You are awesome. We thank you, God, that you give us the strength. You give us the ability that we can complete our corporate fasting. Thank you, Jesus. It's not by our own strength. We struggle at times and uh, we, we may blew it at times, oh God, but we come back to the track again. And there were times that some of you got sick in the midst of your fasting and you come back again and uh, again. But God, you are awesome. We do it together as a church as a corporate body of Christ in corporate fasting and prayer. Come on, give Jesus a thank you. Say thank you to Jesus. No, say, say thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, say thanks to him. Say that again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for breakthroughs. Thank you for speaking to us. Come on, thank you for speaking to me personally. Oh, Lord, we thank you, oh God. We thank you that t today, oh God, we are going to hear you speak to us again. Because one word from God contains our life. How we need your word. Here we are right now. Say with me, Lord Jesus, speak to me. Change my heart. Change my heart. In Jesus' name, amen. I do believe that God is going to share a rhema word to you, to each one of you. What is rhema? Rhema is a specific word from God that you receive specifically for a specific time and God give you a specific assignment. That means it is so personal to every one of you. So even though you hear the same message from the same preacher at the same hour, I do believe the Holy Spirit work is unique. So he will work to you. He will work to you that even the words that I do not speak, he will, he will speak to you into your heart that you will get it. You will, you will be transformed. And so that's why we ask, the, we ask all of you to give yourself a hearing ear. And when you give yourself a hearing ear, a seeing eye, you begin to experience the power of God and you will, you will hear the Holy Spirit will speak to you in many different ways. Amen? How many of you remember last week, if you were not here last week, you can follow the message that I preached last week in our website or in our City Blessing app. And uh, one of the things that I shared to you last week was deep inside human hearts, there is a desire or there is a belief about something supernatural. How many of you remember I shared about the Avengers? How many of you remember I shared that um, uh, even in the entertainment industry, many people, even th those that do not believe in Christ, they expect something supernatural. They desire something supernatural. They expect, they believe in uh, something supernatural or extraterrestrial. And uh, what I shared to you last week about the Avengers, about the uh, superhuman, beyond human, um, those are not real. Those are movies. And God wants you to experience the real one. 
the real one. And when we pray and fast, when we seek the Lord, we humble ourselves and we will experience power. You will receive the, the power from on high. You will receive the power from the Holy Spirit. Not because as much as we mention about prayer and fasting, it is not because of our prayer that we become superhuman. Not because, that, because of our fasting that we become supernatural beyond human thing. But actually it's on the other way around. When we humble ourselves, when we pray, we deny ourselves, we deny our stomach, of course. <laughs> and sometimes, so many of you, your stomach speaks to you, right? Your stomach begins to call you, all right, and uh, you begin to imagine things, you know. So I experience the same thing because I need to remind you also that pastor got hungry too. <laughs> and I learned that um, when when. When, when we humble ourselves, we humble ourselves, that means we, we put ourselves into the obedience of Christ, we humble ourselves, and when we humble ourselves, Christ increase in us, Christ increase in you. That's where you get the power. Not because that because you you fast because we 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 fast and we pray and uh, you, you you think you have the power because of that. You may have uh, the spirit of pride even in your fasting. Oh, I fast more, or I, I fast uh, longer, or I fast, oh, I'm, I'm better than you. Without you realizing it, if you have that kind of attitude, you become, you become proud. And uh, what I want to share to you today is kind of the, uh, the continuation of what I shared last week. And uh, the title is Three Principles of Corporate Success. Three Principles of Corporate Success. That means it's not only one individual, one person, one man, or, or a pastor. No, 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 no. It is corporate. Can you say corporate? It is we, us, together. And with that, I want to share to you a little bit about the history of our church. And uh, why last week I mentioned to you about the experiences that, that I and many others here experienced when we, when we prayed and when we cast out demons. We were about uh, 20, 21 years old at that time. And the reason I shared that to you, and I'm going to share some other experience to you today, it's not about demon all the time, it's about the power of God. The reason I shared that to you, so that you know that this church is where we are where we are right now, because it has a history, it has a background. And the background is we need to share to the next generation and to the next generation. And you also need to share to your generation and to your next generation how awesome God is. So that you know that we are not here because of the, uh, the ability of man, the, uh, the, the smartness of man. No, no, no. It's because of God. So you know, your parents know, your grandparents know, and you know, and the next generation know, we are where we are right now. It is because of God. Because God is awesome. Because of His wondrous work. And I remember when we started back in 1980, I was 20, 21 years old at that time, and we didn't know much about the Word of God, but this is what we practice. And uh, there are quite many of you here that were, you know, I, I, I knew you since 1980s, you know, it's just like, whoa, God, oh, I, I'm glad when I look around, I see not only the young generation, I thank God for the young generation. Come on, give a shout for the young generation. You can do better than that. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, I, I know that we, we also appreciate the older generation because without the older generation, there is no younger generation. So I thank God for, for, for uh, uh, the, the old timers. And I, and I remember back in 1980s, we didn't know much. We didn't know. Well, I myself, I just received the Lord and I, I read the word. I read the Bible. And this is the secret. The secret is... Whatever I knew at that time, I practice it. Hello. Whatever we knew at that time, we practice it. And we didn't know much. 
So that is the power, the transformation power of the word of God. So sometimes, now, sometimes, some people, you know more, you know more now, but you are afraid to act, you are afraid to believe, you are afraid to trust. Just like the song that we sang just now, we, we, because of the knowledge, and then we, we, we begin to have some, uh, some sort of fear, and we call it wisdom. Actually, it was fear. We are, we, why why? We, uh, we, we may call it wisdom, but actually it was pseudo-wisdom. Why? Because actually, simply, we didn't dare to act in faith. And I learned that back in 1980s, you know, we, we didn't, oh, we, 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 we started in the home, and uh, the home became uh, small, and then we, by faith, can you say by faith? By faith, we rented a uh, high school building in Arcadia. We didn't have, we didn't have money, you know, but uh, we were all students at that time. Not 80%, not 90%, 100% we were students at that time. And we, by faith, we rented a high school auditorium in Arcadia. And uh, pretty soon it was, it was too small. And then we rented another building in Temple City. And I saw many, many, many young people. Many young people, they were transformed, me included. It is a corporate happening. It, is, it was a, a corporate move of the Holy Spirit and this generation, that generation at that time, we responded to the call of God. And we saw many people were transformed. Many people got set free. And breakthrough after breakthroughs, you know, uh, people receive Jesus. And we have, we have the Spirit of God within us. And we, wherever we go, we want to share the gospel. We want to share the good news. Can you say good news? How many of you experienced salvation of Christ already? That means you experience good news. You have a good news. Don't keep it to yourself. And at that time, I remember we went from campus to campus. And <laughs> I can laugh now because when I look back at that time, we didn't even speak English. You know, sometimes we have to use sign language to talk to these people. And these people receive Jesus. And uh, we, we, we saw people get healed. They receive miracles. And on and on and many of my friends and even my roommates back then, you know, they become pastors until now. And not all of them, and uh, not all of them are pastors, but uh, many of them become businessmen, businesswomen. They're successful. God used them in their uh, in God's special way, and it is a very powerful move of God among that generation that still continue until today. And I pray even as Pastor Dion shared during our prayer, uh, prayer night on Friday, we want to pass it to the next generation. I want to pass it to the next generation. We, the reason why we want to build a building uh, in the next, uh, hopefully starting next year, we are going to uh, <laughs> we are still working on the permit right now, but uh, we, we, we pray that we will start building the building. Come on. But uh, again, we have said it and we want to say it again. This is for the next generation. We are preparing for the next generation. And I said it and I will say it again and again. I pray that my ceiling will be your floor. I pray that you will be better than me and you will be better than me sooner. How many of you like, like that? I'm talking to the young generation. Come on now. How many of you like that? How many of you want to receive that? And I am at the end of the service, I'm going to conclude with something that it is up to you. As far as what I have, I want to give it to you. If you are hungry, if you are thirsty, if you want more of God, if you want more anointing of God, it's yours. Amen. And you will be better. You will be anointed even more. And that is our dream, not only my dream, I believe our, our pastoral team and our leadership team, we want, our, we want to see our next generation become better than us. 
And we saw people filled with the Holy Spirit. Oh, praise the Lord. We, we did church planting. So many things, so many things that we did that it is not by human power. And uh, history, you know, it goes on. 1998, God spoke to me to begin to uh, start humanitarian aid. And right now, actually, it's already 20 years. 1998-2018, it is already 20 years now, and we are still doing it, and we bring impact to many thousands and thousands of people. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So, <laughs> I remember at that time we... Um, again, talking about the compassion ministry, we didn't know what to do, we didn't have money, uh, but we, we have faith. We didn't have warehouse, but uh, we have faith. And uh, we didn't have experience, but we have faith. So we just walk step by step. Can you say step by step? So with Jesus, you don't have to know everything. In our case, we want to know everything first, and then we take steps, Right? We want to make sure that every I is dotted, every T is crossed. But God said, you just, you just move. You just move. I don't know, God, but just, just trust me. Trust me. Obey me. Just you, you focus in me. Focus on Jesus and he will guide you. And, and, and he, he did until today. Amen. And uh, it's just so exciting and so encouraging when I look back. When I look back, so many things that God has done, mighty works in our church, in our movements, that I want you to receive, and I want, to, I want you to get the baton as we pass the baton. I want you to catch it, and I want you to run with it. I want you to continue it, because it's yours. Don't let anything or anyone, don't let problem or situation hold you back. Believe in the power that God has given you. Amen. So, three principles of corporate success. And um, I want to begin with this verse from 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 20. And I'm reading from the New American Standard Bible. It says, For the kingdom of God does not consist in words but power. For the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. Principle number one. Can you say one? one. Numero uno. One. The first one is anointing. The first one is anointing. I only have three points. Anointing. Can you say anointing? It says, for the kingdom of God does not consist in words, but in power. The God that we serve is a powerful God. And the word power in the original language means dunamos, dunamis. And if you know the word dynamo, it, is, it means power, power. That means dynamo, create power when there is no power. That is the meaning of the word Dunamos. So it is the ability. Can you say ability? You will have the ability. You can do what you cannot do in the natural. It's beyond human. Like what I shared last week. What you saw in the movie is only movies. But what you hear from the Bible is the real thing. It's about you, about your life, about your family, about your relationship, about the next generation, about your children and your children's children. Even when God gave a promise, he said, I will bless you. Not only that I will bless you, but I will bless you and you and your children's children. Wow, it's just God is the God of generation. Amen. And so I want you... To receive it, that the anointing of God, number one is the anointing. Without anointing, there will be no lasting impact. No lasting impact. It's lifeless. We will have routine, routine meetings, but no power, no life. And uh, <laughs> you, you, you will not experience uh, spiritual download of God. But I pray, and I heard many people as we fast. <laughs> if, if you were here on Friday, 
Oh my goodness, it was so easy to pray. It was, it, it's not, it was so easy. We, we prayed together and we couldn't stop. Come on, those of you that were here last Friday, <laughs> it's just like, wow, we couldn't stop praying. It was, it was good. It was, it was powerful. So anointing is very important. So this is the, the first principle. You need to be anointed. If you are an, not anointed, you will operate based on your professionalism. And you trust only your own mind. In the church, the same. In the business, is the same. But if you are anointed, you know, God will speak to you and give you strategies. God will give you strategies. I, I, I remember uh, many years ago, uh, we started a, uh, a marble tile business. I have partnership with two other friends. And uh, we didn't have experience, but we prayed. We didn't know, and we didn't have any 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 uh, knowledge about marble. And we at that time we couldn't uh, differentiate between marble and granite. And we prayed, and we prayed, and we didn't have clients. So you know what happened? We came to the office, and we prayed, and we ca we, we came half an hour earlier, and we prayed. We prayed, God send us client. God send us client, and <laughs> God sent us clients. Come on now, and we had a lot of clients. Oh, praise the Lord! And we, you know, about a month or two months later, three months later, uh, we 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 evaluate, and some of those clients, they they didn't pay. No good. And so we prayed. We prayed again. Uh, it's just a simple prayer. Can you say simple? simple? So instead of just praying, God sent us clients, we prayed, God sent us good clients that will pay. <laughs> and God led us and we grew the business. And it's just like, Wow, God help us step by step. In the church, if we are not careful, we can operate the church service by professionalism only. Oh, after this, just like what Pastor Healy mentioned just now. Oh, okay, praise and worship, fast song, slow song, announcement, tithing, offering, preaching. That's it. Bye. No, 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 no. There are times, you know, we need to, well, we move in the gift and we pray and we, we do different things because this is not my service. This is God's service. Praise the Lord. So uh, anointing, you know, is some people, they want to have church. They want to have church their way. No. So again, if you, if you, if you need to be reminded, let me say to you again, there are times that we will not do things the same. Amen? Praise the Lord. And uh, the kingdom of God is a spiritual kingdom. It must operate on spiritual principles with spiritual power. Power. And I learned about these three principles from my spiritual father, Bishop Bud Pierce. He preached about this in his church. So I want to share this to you because we need to build up. We need to build the momentum. We need to go up again. Yes, uh, it's not like after we finish our, our corporate fasting, we, we take off our God. Okay, now I am going to eat. I am going to eat more. I am to go to a all-you-can-eat restaurant. No, don't do that. You are welcome to eat, uh, but uh, slowly, all right? Can you say slowly? You may get stomach ache if you, well, when you fast, your stomach get, get uh, smaller, leaner. Just, just look at me here. Huh? Suddenly six-pack came up again. <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So, what is the anointing? The anointing, the anointing of God is so special. It's not based on our professionalism. It's not based on our talent. Just because you can do things well doesn't mean that you are anointed. Just because you can sing well doesn't mean that you are anointed. Just because you can preach well, you are anointed. No, you can do well, you can sing well, you can preach well, but no anointing. 
So anointing is, is not determined by talent. In fact, sometimes talent can hinder the anointing because you depend so much on your ability and not on God. You depend so much on your talent. You depend so much on your professionalism. And you know, when you move in the spirit of God, it's scary because yes, we want to have our notes ready, but when God moves, sometimes we don't know what is next. And it is scary. It is good, but it is uh, not good to your flesh, especially if you are the leader. The anointing is not based on quietness or noise. So just because you are quiet doesn't mean you are anointed or, or the other way around. Just because we have a, a good shout, a good music, drums and cymbal and everything, then it's, it's, it's anointing. No, it does not determine anointing. So what is the definition of anointing? I am going to read to you, and I don't think you will be fast enough to write it down, and I'm not trying to slow down. So I want to encourage you to listen to it again in our website. Is it okay? So what is the anointing? What is the de definition of the anointing of God's Spirit? What is the definition of the anointing of God's Spirit? The definition of the anointing of God's Spirit is the overflowing of the Messiah's divine life of holiness into a human life which has been consecrated to God through personal cross of Christ's experiences which make it spiritually rich and thus able to impart effectively the light and the fragrance of God's word into the life of others, producing in them, producing in you, deep satisfaction and obvious Christian fruitfulness. It's not only faithfulness, but fruitfulness. Jesus Christ. Christ means the anointed one. Jesus means Savior. Jesus Christ, the Savior, is the anointed one. And the purpose of anointing is to glorify God and not man. I want you to know that when you are anointed, don't take pride. The purpose of anointing is to glorify God. To glorify God, our worship leader Sharon quoted from Isaiah 61 verses 3, but uh, let's, let's read from verse 1 to 3 right now. Isaiah 61, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the afflicted. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to captives and freedom to prisoners. This is the reason why you're anointed. Next verse. To, pro to proclaim the favorable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God to comfort all who mourn. And then verse 3. To grant those who mourn in Zion. Zion is the mountain of God. In other translation, in different verses, it says that let's go up to the mountain of God. The mountain of God is Mount Zion. It's about the house of God. And the house of God is filled with the people of God, which is you and I. And then it says to grant those who mourn in Zion. Maybe you are mourning right now. Maybe you are crying. Maybe you are in sorrow right now. It says giving them a garland. Giving them a garland. Garland instead of ashes. The oil of gladness instead of mourning. The mantle of praise instead of a spirit of fainting. So they, so they will be called oaks of righteousness. The planting of the Lord. Let's read the next, next few words together. Three, two, one. Oh, come on, say it louder. One, two, three. 
One more, one more, one more. Louder, louder. Three, two, one. Wow, that he may be glorified. You are anointed for a purpose. Don't keep it to yourself. You are anointed. When we are talking about the secret of corporate fasting, you are anointed for a purpose. It is the anointing of God to cause us to do what we did. We couldn't do it like what I said earlier. When we look back, whoa, it's like, God, you cause us to do many powerful things. We couldn't do it with our own strength. But corporately, as we humble ourselves, you work within us. Point number two. Point number two is prayer. Yes, we concluded our prayer and fasting, but we need to continue to pray. We need to continue to pray. Come on, pray. If you don't know how to pray, don't worry because Jesus' disciples didn't know how to pray either. So uh, how about if we read the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 6, verse 9. This is what Jesus said. Pray then in this way. Come on, say it together with me. Our Father who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Uh, okay, you are, okay, stop, stop, stop. Come on, are you still fasting? <laughs> you have more strength today, right? Can you, can you open your mouth and make it as a declaration? It's not like a memorization of verses. You got it? Yes. All right. Three, two, one. Our Father, who is in heaven, come on. Hallowed be your name. Come on now. This is so powerful. Every word in this prayer is so powerful. And it is not meant for us to just chant 10 times, 100 times. No, you need to Stop and, and, and just, oh God, you're my father. I praise you. I glorify you. Lord, I thank you. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done. Your kingdom, your kingdom come in my life, in our life, in my family, in this church. Whew. When you pray that prayer, wow. You experience the supernatural power of God and you will not be bored anymore if you, if you feel like it's boring to pray. Yeah. A prayerless church never have God show up. Thank God we are a praying church. Thank God we, are, we have praying people. Thank God we have intercessors. And not only intercessors, because sometimes some people think, oh, this is the job of the intercessors. So I don't need to pray. Come on now. We pray. When you pray, whew, you can really move things. I was going to say mountain, that's what the Bible is saying, but sometimes you, when I say mountain, you say, really? You know, but whatever, whatever mountain, whatever challenges, whatever Goliath you have, you pray. You pray. And God will work on your behalf because it's the Spirit in you. Amen? And uh, <laughs> praise the Lord. God, I'm, I'm going to quote from John Wesley, this man of God said, God does nothing but an answer to prayer. Wow. God is waiting for earth to pray. Heaven is waiting for earth to agree with heaven. We agree with heaven. So when you pray, use the word of God. Use the Bible. 
God, this is already written in your word. I want to agree with you and your kingdom come in my life. Your will be done in my life. And I know it's hard to face this, to face that, but God, you make me able. You give me the ability. You give me the power. You give me the dunamos. Without, without you, heaven cannot. And without you, heaven will not. So heaven is waiting for you. Spirit needs a body. That's why heaven is waiting. Heaven is waiting for you. So when you pray, you have the confidence. Lord, I thank you that you heard my prayers. Hallelujah. So we need to pray. We need to pray again. We need to pray and it is good when we pray together. Yes, we pray individually. I pray individually. But it is also good when we pray corporate prayer. And uh, when, you, when you hang out with, with people that like to pray, you'll become like them. That's why you need to choose who you hang out with. If you hang out with people who complains all the time, pretty soon you'll become a PhD in complainer. <laughs> but if you hang out with people that have faith, people that are positive based on the word of God, people that depend on God, you know, um, the, Paul said, um, Evil company corrupts good habit. So if you hang out with evil people, it will corrupt good habits. But you, if you hang out with good people, come on now, you will, you will raise up. You will go up. You will be better. And uh, I can tell you who you are by who you hang out with. So that is number two is what? What is number one? Anointing. Anointing, yes. But it's not enough. Prayer. And then the third one, and I will conclude with this last point. The third one is passionate unity. Passionate. It's just passionate. You have passion. You have passion. Passion, in other words, the word passion, uh, in other words, is also zeal. Can you say zeal? Zeal. zeal. And the, 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 the word unity, can you say it first? Okay, passionate unity. Passionate. Say that again, passionate unity. passionate unity. You know, you can experience power starting from home. You husband and wife, be united. Yes, you have differences, of course. You are not the same with your wife, of course. Yeah, even until today, when, when, when my wife said, uh, can, I, can I turn off the air condition? I said, no, it's, 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 it's hot. She said, it's cold. I said, it's hot. She said, uh, so we, we uh, I don't understand and I don't try to understand because it's been uh, 30, 32 uh, years now. You know, it's just like, oh, so we try to meet in the middle. So when we drive, you know what I do sometimes? Okay, are, are you cold? Okay, now let's just turn on the fan. The fan. <laughs> and then sometimes he said, okay, you can turn on the air condition. Let me just put on my jacket. <laughs> what a jacket? Wow. So we meet in the middle. So if you are united, husband and wife united, amen. amen. Parents, you are united, Amen. Parents and children united. Amen. When you have that passion, passionate unity, you need to have that passion. You need to have that passion to be united. That means you, there are times that you, you, you need to give. There, there are times that you need to take. You know, you, you need to work together. Work together. There are times that you need to talk. There are times that you need to uh, zip your lips. There are times, you know, sometimes arguments starting from uh, when we have a nagging wife. I'm sorry, women, but uh, I'm just quoting the word here. 
don't 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 look at me like oh don't roll your eyes to me I I didn't say it I just quote the word of God so wife do not nag and every husband said <laughs> but ah uh, okay uh, don't give your wife elbow okay uh, I'm, I'm glad uh, okay uh, say it again next week pastor no 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 <laughs> but some husband are also nagging <laughs> and every wife now is your turn saying amen, amen. So again, unity, passionate unity. You have to, to have that passion. You have to have passion. There, there are times that, yeah, when, 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 I'm, when I made mistake, I say, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Joyce. And I don't have to labor to say that. I say, I'm sorry, Joyce. Okay. And vice versa. You know, I, I learn about that. And that's why we have unity and we enjoy it. We enjoy it. It's for your own good. You eat the fruit of unity. It's you. And uh, uh, so, what is the meaning of unity? In Hebrew, unity means growing together until you become one. Growing together until you become one. So not only growing until you become one in the family, but also in the church, in the body of Christ. We have differences. The more people, usually the more differences. More people, usually more problems. You want promotion? Yes. You want more responsibility? No. So you forget about promotion. All right. So again, unity means growing together until you become one. So what I learn is it's not unity with flesh and blood that is prioritized. It is unity with God. You are un united with God first. You are united with God, with God first. One with God. Now it is interesting. I'm almost done. It is interesting when I check the word passion. And you can Google it. Not now. Just trust me, you can Google it later. Okay. The meaning of the word, definition of the word passion is Strong and barely controllable emotion. It includes intense sexual drive. What? Anger. What? Frenzy. Hmm. Tantrum. Fixation. Compulsion. Appetite. Addiction. And obsession. Whoa. But wait, can you say wait? wait? One more time, wait. Good. The meaning of the word passion is also crucifixion, suffering, agony, martyrdom. Wow. When I look at the di dictionary, you know, the definition of passion is, 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 is defined as this. A suffering or, or enduring of imposed or inflicted pain, any suffering or distress, especially, specifically, the suffering of Christ between the time of the Last Supper and his death. Wow. That's why I said earlier, one of the words, the synonym of passion is zeal. Because when you read the definition of passion the first time, it's just like, wow, there are so many secular, carnal definition. But God, you want us to, to experience this. And... Uh, I don't, I want to have a relationship with God first. I want to be united with God first. But usually when we talk about, about relationship 
and especially point number three, passionate unity, usually we don't say, we don't use the word crucifixion, suffering. I don't usually say, crucify me, Joyce. Um, I, I never say, Joyce, I enjoy my agony that you give me. <laughs> no. But again, Paul said that I may know him, I may know Jesus, and the power of his resurrection, and the fellowship of his sufferings. Oh. Those of you who are wondering, it's from Philippians chapter 3, verse 10. Usually we want the power. Paul said that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. Power, yeah, we want the power. And it doesn't stop there. And the fellowship of his suffering. Whoa. Jesus suffered between the Last Supper and the crucifixion. Wow, it's just so many you know, his, his sweat becomes like drops of blood because of stress, tension. He says, why? Because he was zealous. What is the meaning of the word zeal? Zeal means to burn with strong feelings of good. Burn with strong feelings of good. That's why John chapter 12, I mean John chapter 2, I'm sorry. John chapter 2, let me read it quickly. There's a story starting from verse 13. Let me read it. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem, and he found in the temple those who were selling oxen and sheep and dove, and the money changers seated at their Tables. Verse 15, it says, And he made a scorch of courts and drove them all out of the temple with the sheep and the oxen. And he poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. Whoa, Jesus was uh, gentle. Yes, not, not in this context. He was mad. And then verse 16, it says, And to those who were selling the doves, he said, Take these things away. Stop making my father's house a place of business. And then verse 17. His disciples remembered that it was written, Zeal for your house will consume me. When you have that zeal, yes, we conclude our corporate prayer and the fasting. But again, you will have a new normal. And I want to impart this to you, that you will have, you would like to fast even privately. You will have a new zeal. I cannot wait to pray. You will have a new zeal. Some people came to me and said, hey, Pastor, it was good. We need to pray more together corporately. Yes, some people came to me. That is zeal. Some people, you know, they said, wow, well, we need to have more, not only prayer, but prayer and fasting. Some of you will experience, I cannot wait. Oh, what day is today? Uh, Thursday. Oh, I cannot wait to come to church again. What day is today? Oh, I, I cannot wait. I, I, I need to, to gather with my carousel brothers and sisters. That is zeal. 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 Psalms 26 verse 8. O oh Lord, I love the habitation of your house and the place where your glory dwells. Can you say habitation? When we pray, when we praise, he will come. But he not only come, he, I, we pray, I want to experience God more. Not only that he comes and leave, but he will come and stay. Thank you, Jesus. 
Let me conclude with this. Psalms 133, 133, 133. Verse 1. 133, my friend. <laughs> All right. Read it together. 3, 2, 1. Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brothers and sisters, as the translation brethren, that means brothers and sisters, to dwell together in unity. So first we united with God and then we united with one another. We, you were united and it is good, it is good. And you know what happened? When you have unity in the house, when you have unity in carousel, when you have unity in the church, God will command blessing. God will command blessing. It's like blessing is, is, is pictured as a, uh, a person. It's like God talked to blessing. Hey, blessing, come here. You bless the Sudarsonos. You bless Hendrik. You bless me. You bless Andy. You bless Wendy. You bless Sharon Tandarki. You bless Richard. You bless the family. You. It's just, are, are you with me? God called blessing. Come on now. Blessing. Go bless the city blessing congregation. Shoo! Blessing will say, yes, sir. That's why you are blessed. Looking back. Why don't you look back at yourself? What did you have 30 years ago? What you don't have 30 years ago and what you have now? What you didn't have 20 years ago or 10 years ago that you have now. At the show of hands, quickly, honestly, how many of you can tell I am better now than I am many years ago? Look around. Come on now. It's so powerful. Let me say this. I mentioned earlier, I pray that my ceiling will be your floor. I learned from my bishop, and I heard it many years ago. He said something like this, Die empty. Die empty. Well, some people die empty. Others die empty. What's the difference? The difference is some people they die empty because they don't have nothing to give. But the second one, die empty because you have a lot to give. You give it, you give it, you give it, you give it. I have a lot to give. I want to die empty. I'm not saying I'm going to die soon. Don't say this. Oh, 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 is this a profess prophecy? No. God will give me a healthy body and a long life. But when it's time for me to go, I want to die empty. And I have a lot I want to give to you. I want to impart to you. Let's stand up. I want to give it to you. How many of you want it? You say to God, you make a commitment to God yourself. Yes, there are so many experiences and so many things that I haven't got a chance or I am not able to share publicly. It is the power of God. It is an arm thing of God. So powerful. I want you to receive it. I want you to say yes and I want you to ask yourself, how about your, your first love? Do you have that first love with Jesus again when you first received Jesus? The fire within you. Remember, remember that. Remember that. And again, we are where we are right now is because of the corporate principle of success. But this is a journey. So that means we will go. We will go in this journey together and we will see together the power of God and the glory of God. Lift up your hands. Say thank you, Jesus.
Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Those of you who want to say to the Lord, I am I'm hungry, I'm thirsty, I want more of God. You say it. Pray more. Spend time with God more. Not selfish prayer, but prayer that you pray also for others. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name, Amen.